Hi, I'm William Spaniel. Let's learn some game theory. Today's topic is Knife Edge Equilibria. I cover this in Lesson 3.3 of Game Theory 101, The Complete Textbook. You can check the video description for more information about that. The game that we're going to be looking at today is actually really, really simple to address this point. So the game looks like this. Both players have two strategies. Player one can go up or down. Player two can go left or right. If player one goes up and player two goes left, then they both get X. If player two goes right and player one goes down, they both get negative X, and otherwise they both get zero. Now, X in this sense can be any number whatsoever. Could be a negative number, could be one, could be zero, could be 18,000. Doesn't matter, it's just some number. We're leaving that general, and so we're going to solve this game generally for all the values of x. So x can be num any number in the world, and we're going to solve it for every number in the world. So the way we're going to do this is by first comparing x to 0. So suppose x is greater than 0. We're getting that from the fact that we're looking at this versus this, right? So suppose x is greater than 0. Well, if that's the case, if you're player 1 and you know player 2 is going to go left, then you should go up because x is positive, so it's going to be better for you than going down and getting 0. And likewise, if player 2 is going right, then you're still going to want to go up because going up gives you 0, and going down gives you negative x. x is a positive number here, so negative x is negative, which means up is better for you than down, which means up is better for player 1 regardless of what player 2 does when x is greater than 0. And so that means up strictly dominates down for player 1. We could do something very similar to show that player 2 has a strictly dominant strategy as well. She should always play left regardless of what player 1 does. And so that means right is strictly dominated. And that gives us a unique solution here. So when x is greater than 0, up strictly dominates down, left strictly dominates right. And so up left is the unique equilibrium. Well, now let's see what happens on the other side of things. Suppose x is less than 0. Well, if that's the case, now x is a negative number. So if player 2 is going left, that means player 1 should want to go down. Since 0 is greater than x, remember x is negative, so 0 is greater than a negative number. Down is better for up for player 1, given that player 2 is going to go left. And if player 2 is going to go right, again, same thing here. So if player 1 goes up, he gets 0. If player 1 goes down, he goes and gets negative x. Remember, x is a negative number, so you take the negative of a negative. You get a positive number. That means down's paying more than up. So that means down is always better for player 1 than up is, as long as x is less than 0. And so down is what player 1 will play. And we can do something very similar to show that player 2 has a strictly dominant strategy as well. She's always going to want to play right. And so we have another equilibrium here where when the x is less than 0, down right is going to be the unique equilibrium by dominance, just like it was the case when x was greater than 0, except in reverse. All right, so we have x is greater than 0 here. We know what happens when x is less than 0. That leaves one question to be answered. What happens when x is equal to 0? Well, when x is equal to 0, the game becomes really trivial. Doesn't matter what the players do. Doesn't matter what player 1 does. Doesn't matter what player 2 does. Player 1 is always going to get 0. Player 2 is always going to get 0. They can't change anything and not get 0. So 0 is the outcome for both of these players. And so... Everything is in equilibrium, right? Because remember, a Nash equilibrium is a set of strategies, one for each player, such that no player has a profitable deviation. But if you're always earning zero no matter what you do, no matter what your opponent does, then you never have a profitable deviation because you're always getting zero. You can't improve your payoff. It's literally impossible for you to improve your payoff when x is equal to zero. Now, we call some of these equilibria knife edge equilibria here. So a knife edge equilibrium is an equilibrium that exists only for exact values of the exogenous variables. In this case, x is our exogenous variable. If you vary the variables in even the slightest way, just a tiny, tiny, tiny amount, then a knife edge equilibrium disappears. So what do I mean by that? Well, consider this down-left equilibrium. When x is equal to 0, this is an equilibrium. 
Why is that the case? Well, again, if x is equal to zero, then player one can't profitably deviate from down to up because zero is, in this case, exactly the same as x. And player two can't deviate because this red zero is no different than this negative x because x is equal to zero. So this is an, uh, an equilibrium. It's a Nash equilibrium, but it's also a knife edge equilibrium because if x is any other value, any other value at all, it doesn't matter what it is, give me any number that's greater than zero, even the tiniest, tiniest, tiniest number, like point zero 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 one well if that's the case if we move that slight amount upward from x equals zero then this is no longer an equilibrium because player one will no longer want to play down because x is positive now and so player one can profitably deviate from going down to up it's not going to be my much because again x is very very tiny in this it's point zero 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 one but that's still more than what he would be getting from getting down and so this down left equilibrium only exists when x is equal to zero that's very precarious we call this a knife edge equilibrium because it's resting on sort of the top of a knife you can't really step foot on it there's not much space for you to step down on it it's so thin you're essentially your equilibrium just gonna get sliced in half because if you go any distance away from x this equilibrium disappears now when we talk about knife edge equilibria we usually sort of brush them to the side and don't really pay much attention to them that and for the reason is the reason that we ignore these sort of knife edge equilibria is that if you think of exogenous variables as being drawn randomly from a great pool of numbers, so for example, suppose this x value was just occurring naturally in nature, and nature could take on any sort of value from negative infinity, or not negative infinity, negative 1 million and positive 1 million. It could take any whole number between that and that, negative 1 million to positive 1 million. Well, if that's the case, then suppose each of those has equal weight, the probability of drawing exactly zero, which is required for this equilibrium to exist, is going to be, uh, I guess, one over two million and one. In other words, the odds of drawing that and the odds of nature just picking this x to appear as zero just naturally within nature is going to be tiny. And in fact, if you've had a little bit of calculus in the past, then, or not calculus, probability theory in the past, then you'd know that if we instead assume that the value is drawn from a continuous distribution, then the probability of drawing a knife edge value, or essentially an exact particular value from a continuous distribution, is actually zero. So in this case, when we think of this as a continuous distribution, it's literally impossible for us to get the values that are required out of a knife edge equilibrium if these games are appearing naturally. If you've never seen probability theory before in your life, then you can ignore this this third point here and just relax and, and understand the second point and, and that'll be sufficient. So this is actually a very good thing that we can ignore knife edge equilibria based off of this ju justification. The reason for that is that when we have this sort of knife edge condition when one value is exactly equal to another value then what that's going to often do to us is give us weakly dominated strategies and if you remember back from the first unit then you'll recall that whenever we have knife edge or not knife edge weakly dominated strategies we tend to have all sorts of problems in finding our Nash equilibria, whether it creates a problem with iterated elimination of weakly dominated strategies, or if it means that we have equilibria or infinitely many equilibria and mixed strategies. When we brush away these knife edge equilibria, that means we don't have to find those sorts of equilibria, which can be troublesome and time consuming and generally annoying and sort of unrealistic. And guess what? Well, we don't even have to bother with them at all. And we can just cite them as being a knife edge equilibrium and, and move on from there. And so if you actually ever read papers, you'll sometimes see knife edge solutions not being solved for, solved for. If there is a knife edge equilibrium, the author will just ignore them or he'll throw them in the appendix because they'll say that, you know, this doesn't really matter. It's unrealistic, but it's in the appendix if you really want to care about it. So being able to ignore knife edge equilibria, again, a very good thing and, and something that we will enjoy not having to find later on. All right, so that wraps up this video on knife edge equilibria. In the next video, we will talk about soccer penalty kicks. And then following that, we will relate that to another very important concept in game theory called comparative statics. So join me in the next video when we talk about penalty kicks. Take care.